Hello guys, welcome to my video series tutorial to talk about Microsoft Semantic Kernel. In this video, I am going to focus on in our next function called Semantic Function. In previous videos, I explained about Semantic Kernel functions. There are two types of functions available, one for Semantic Function and another one for Native Function. We talk about more about Native Function. In this video, as I mentioned, I am focused on the Semantic Function. Let's start. So what is semantic function? Semantic function involves using a prompt as an input. So if you are using semantic function, you have to define the prompt. That prompt is an input the semantic function. So what prompt we define in the semantic function? A service and generate the response based on our prompt. So where I should define this prompt? This prompt should define in the text file and the file name should be named as escapeprompt.txt file. So this is a semantic function is a text file. The text file name should be escapeprompt. So if you find other text file name, it won't recognize. So you have to define the escapeprompt.txt file. The next one is you can configure the parameter also based on the prompt. If you remember the next function we find the prompt creation. So prompt we define there. It also is possible, but this configuration you have to define the separate JSON file called config.json. You can use variables, other function, and logical operator to create dynamic and natural prompt. The first step we see in the prompt as an input. No, this input you can define the variable also. In the runtime, you can pass the variable values to generate the dynamic prompt. It it can also return values that can be used other function or native code. This text file, if you define the prompt, this return the values based on your prompt. That value you can use other purpose also. So once you define the escape prompt, this prompt you can involve to other operation also to link with other semantic functions or you want to use other native codes, you can use the semantic function as well. So let's move on to visual. We'll see how to define the semantic function, how to execute all the steps we'll see now. So I'm moving to Visual Studio Code. In Visual Studio Code, I have created one new project is C Sharp Hello template. This is a default template. First, I'm going to change the config file. There are two config files available. As I mentioned last video, based on your service, you can change this file. If you are using Azure, you can use this file. If you are using OpenAI, you can use this file. So I'm going to use Azure OpenAI. So I select this file. First, I'm rename this file here. Rename to app settings.json file. The rest of the word is not required. Remove it. Next, we have to fill this configuration settings, which endpoint type you are going to use. There are two endpoint available. In the program.cs file, you can see endpoint type text completion or chat completion. Here I select the default text completion. So let's keep this one. Service type, Azure OpenAI. Service ID, I'm not going to use now. Just uh, make it empty here. The next deployment ID, endpoint, API key. This information you can find in your Azure resource group. Once you find it, you can fill this information. I have filled with my settings. So I close this folder. The next, we are going to create a semantic function. First step, we have to go to skills. There are some default plugins or skill is available. I don't want to use this one. I just delete this fun skill. Delete. I'm going to create a new folder called city skill. And create one more folder this folder called history. So as I mentioned, first we have to create the text file because semantic function we have to create in escape prompt.txt file. So I'm going to create a new file escape prompt.txt. I'm going to provide the prompt here to find the city name or location name with provided text. 
So locate the C. So the provided text I'm going to pass dynamically. For that, I have to define one variable, the variable called input. So you have to define the variable like this open braces, dollar sign, and variable name input. That's it. Save. Once if you define the variable in the semantic file, you have to define, you have to create the config file. You have to define the variable also. For that, I'm going to create one more file called config.json. Just paste my config settings. The first line schema version one, description of this config file, find the city or location based on my prompt I provided here. Type, as I mentioned, I used the completion endpoint type that I provided here. Next, the parameters, completion parameters. I define only one parameter, max, to max tokens, so 50, uh, this is not needed. Next, input parameters, name, variable name input, which we define in the escape prompt.txt file, input, and description of the input. If you want to provide any default value, you can add it here. Otherwise, you can just leave it as empty. Our semantic function is ready. To execute the function, we no need to go to the Azure OpenAI Studio to run this prompt. Instead of that, we can execute the prompt Visual Studio Code itself. For that, you have to go to SK, the semantic kernel tab. Immediately, you can see here the function city skill which we specified here, skill, city skill, automatically available here. At the moment, we, ha we have only one skill, that is a history. Inside skill, uh, city skill, we have one folder called history, that available here. Before executing this command, you can see the endpoint. I have already logged in here, so my Visual Studio account subscription display here. In case, if you are login first time, you can see the two options, sign in option and other one option is a tenant ID option. If you provide sign in option, in case Visual Studio not able to find the Azure OpenAI subscription, you can use the tenant ID, then it will execute. If you expand this one Visual Studio Enterprise subscription, you can see all the Azure OpenAI related resource group here. Okay, back to our function. I select the history, click this play button. Now the prompt is running. Here we have to provide our input. Input, I am traveling to Chennai this month end. Press enter. Here you can see the result. Our parameter will start from beginning. So we are using Azure OpenAI model type, execute skill history, city skill dot history, parameter input. I am traveling to Chennai this month end. Prompt, locate the city or location name within provided text. This is our prompt here. The text we are passing as a runtime. I am traveling to Chennai this month end. A result you can see is find the location name. Location name Chennai here and the rest of the tokens related information. So our function executing properly. I'm going to add some more information in the prompt. I need city name plus some history of the information from the city. I will add it here I provi and provide the city name along with Brief history limited two lines. The history should be in two lines. That's it. So the same message I'm going to execute now. Just copy this one. Clear the output. Go to SK. Run again. Same input. Execute. Input. Prompt. Result. Result contain the history of the city information some information is coming fine 
but this time we seen only the history information but the city name is missing i need city name plus the history information for that i'm going to add one more statement json format like this example i'm providing the example also here so city name in our example if we provide the uh, i'm traveling to chennai the city name should come here chennai and history information we'll execute again the same statement maximize screen we can see it here the prompt information result this time you can see city and history information the json format is coming look like our prompt is working fine we go back to our code program.cs file skills fine we removed the fun skill we have to use the city skill so i change this one to city next context the variable we have to pass the input we define in the escape prompt as an input so we have to change it here the input uh, change it here this time i plan to visit paris this variable no more required we remove this statement and we have to execute the history change this one to skill history that's it save put the breakpoint here run the code import semantic skill from directory we specified our directory and refer this one city skill so it's import all the skills from this directory at the moment we have only one skill history you can see the key history and value some information is available next we define the variable we said i plan to visit paris the next step we are executing this skill we'll write it the output also we can see the output city name paris and history of the paris also available so this is a way to use semantic function in semantic kernel